This is Ryan Abraham and Gerard Martinez, USCFootball.com. Instant analysis without Keely Yor. Uh, RIP Keely. No, we love Keely. Got to see her today. We are at USC up on a parking structure doing instant analysis because we got to talk to the USC assistant coaches. We got to do this a couple years ago and it was cool just to be in a room with these guys and meet them for the first time. Meet most of them. We had one uh, we had a little change to the lineup early on, but I'm going to read it for you real quick. Uh, so we first got to hear from Josh Henson who is the offensive coordinator, offensive line coach. He was over Zoom. We didn't get to hear from Dave Nickel, who's the inside uh, receivers coach. So we didn't get to hear from him. So he's the only one we didn't get to hear from. But we got Henson uh, over Zoom. And then in person, we had defensive coordinator Alex Grinch, uh, inside linebackers coach Brian Odom, outside linebackers coach Roy Manning, uh, DB coach, you might have heard of him, Dante Williams, uh, Sean Nua, the defensive line coach, Dennis Simmons, who is the outside wide receivers coach, uh, then uh, Kyle McDonald, the running backs coach, and Zach Hansen, the tight ends coach. So quite a, sorry, I just wanted, didn't want to miss anybody. Quite a list of guys we got to talk to today. About 15 minutes from each one. Real quick, like kind of overall, I, I thought it was a positive thing. What did you like? Oh, certainly. I, I think being able to hear from the coaches, their philosophies, how everything comes together. And I think maybe the overriding thing is Coach Riley. Uh, I think Lincoln Riley and, and his philosophy and his leadership and all these coaches really looking to him and uh, I think feeling, you know, coming out of the gates with Josh Henson, a lot of people really wanted to know, okay, you're offensive coordinator and you're offensive line coach. So that dynamic, how does it work between you and Lincoln Riley? And he said right off the bat, Lincoln Riley, he's the play caller. Yeah, yeah, it was true. He was the play caller. But I liked how he talked about it being a collaborative effort. There's a lot of guys that have coached offensive line. We heard, you know, from uh, Hanson at the end, uh, you know, Zach Hanson. But him being a collaborator on the offense overall, I think was important. He's going to let Lincoln Riley call the plays, but they're all kind of helping. He's there to enhance it and enhance that experience. It just seems like collaboration was a big part of what everyone said today. Yeah, and I think that's huge because Lincoln Riley's obviously a skilled guy. He's working with the quarterbacks, and they have your offensive quarter be an offensive line coach. You can see what you know, Josh Hansen brings to the table knowing what's going on up front. And that's going to be obviously vital for USC. They've got to have good pass protection. But more than anything, we've got to see an improvement to this run game. Yeah. And so I think you bring a guy in that he's been a coordinator before at Missouri. And Missouri, interestingly enough, was a little bit of a common thing among a lot of the coaches. They're not all coached together at Missouri, but Missouri came up not only with Josh, uh, Josh Hansen, but also Alex Grinch, yeah. Roy Manning, and Brian Odom. So they all had kind of uh, been around and together at multiple stops, but Missouri was a school that you just, you don't really think about with all these different coaches. You think about Washington State with Alex Grinch and Roy Manning and Brian Odom, but uh, you know, Missouri is actually a school that they have a lot of uh, commonality for. And, and Alex Grinch basically said, that's where we all met together yeah. for the defensive side of the ball. So everybody thinks Washington State, but the defensive coordinator, that scheme and what they are doing is kind of uh, been sourced all the way back to Missouri when yeah. Missouri was actually an SEC school. Yeah. And doing well, winning the uh, East a couple times in a row. Uh, for Alex Grinch, you know, we stopped at Ohio State, at Washington State. I asked him what that 24 hours was like after Bedlam. I felt bad. He was like, thanks for bringing up the game we lost. And I, it wasn't about the game. It was <laughs> we really. Won, we won a lot of games, Ryan Abraham, and you <laughs> yeah. bring up the one that we lost last. I was trying not to, you know, I mean, they don't want to, a lot of times they don't want to talk about the past, but it was really just about, he was one of the guys that got on the plane. Uh, but he also talked about, you know, the get on the plane with uh, Lincoln Riley and came out to USC. And uh, it was a crazy time for you know everyone that was doing that. But he kind of talked about the defensive scheme. I know you're a big kind of scheme guy. What did you like what he had to say about that? First and foremost, right out of the gates, and Sean Cody's back there for the radio team, and I know he loved to hear this, one gap defensive line, all right? So one gap, meaning that you're putting a defensive lineman in the gap and you say, go attack the quarterback. That's what they want to do, and that's not what USC has been doing in the past with some of their schemes. And so I think up front, first and foremost, the fact that they're going to recruit players to play a one-gap defense means that the defensive line, they're going to be the playmakers. They're not going to use the defensive line just to be body catchers and to take on a block and put everything on the linebackers. The linebackers are going to have to take on blocks as well, but the defensive line, the three technique, the five technique, you're going to see more plays made by the defensive line in this defense. Yeah. Speaking of linebackers, I know you had some notes on what the linebackers coaches had to say. Yeah, I mean, specifically, I think Roy Manning is, is the most interesting because he's the outside linebackers and Nichols coach. 
And if you were talking maybe 15, 20 years ago, you'd say, how are you coaching both of those <laughs> positions? They're totally different positions, but that's the evolution of college football. And he talked a little bit about that, about what the offenses are doing and what they want to do to put their best athletes on the field. And so that nickel position, which is basically what it is, it's an outside linebackers and it's the defensive back sort of molded into a position that they're just calling nickel. And that nickel one game might be one person, that nickel in another game might be a different person in terms of body type. So that's interesting. He kind of implied that the nickel position might see guys like maybe a Max Williams, but you might also see a bigger safety that comes into the game if they're playing against a team that likes to run the ball more. Yeah, a lot of options. Seems like there was a lot of options there. And uh, Sean Nua was a really interesting guy coming over from Michigan. I think he started off uh, making a joke that his family was still back in a snowstorm. And yes. uh, he didn't want, they don't even want to FaceTime with him because it's, you know, so warm and stuff here but uh you know that polynesian connection um he had like you know definitely brought up a lot of former usc players that were polynesian but he probably said the fewest amount of words but maybe it was the most impactful from what he did say well i think maybe the interesting thing right off the bat that he talked about with the transfer portal because that's something that we've all talked about a lot and a lot of the media wanted to know i mean how is this recruiting out of the porthole uh as we call it sometimes on the peristyle and the peristyle podcast but the portal is uh, a, a dynamic new sort of thing that everybody's getting used to. You know, the media is getting used to it. The college players are getting used to it. College football coaches are getting used to it. The compliance officers are getting used to it. And he said, it's nuts. It's crazy. I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm supposed to say that, but it's crazy. And so, and I, I agree with him. It is crazy. It's been nuts. Um, but uh, he brings in uh, a, a couple of players there and, and Earl Barquette and um, – uh, I forget the the uh, the the, oh, ty the the Kansas State Tyron yeah, uh, yeah Ty um, Tyrone Teleni uh, and and talked a little bit about those guys and, and, and specifically about Teleni because he's a Samoan and he came over uh, from there and, and went to Kansas State but kind of a, you could see that there was some familiarity there with his game he had played rugby said uh, you know his best football is ahead of him and certainly he got in the football late. And I think that's the interesting thing. You asked him a question, actually, which I, I, I love to hear, too. He fired back right at you. You said, Coach, most coaches are not a lot of big bodies anymore. Like, what what do you do? You're at Michigan. You're, coach, you're, you're, you're recruiting the East Coast. You're recruiting the Midwest. And you got all these bodies. He goes, there's bodies. Because we just got to go find them. And that's exactly the answer you want to hear as a, a Pac-12 football fan. Because the truth is, there are bodies. Sometimes they might be 250 pounds. 260 pounds and those guys you got to build up to be 280 pounds 290 pounds but there are bodies and that's the sort of confidence that he's going to develop guys and it's not we're just going to go out there and look for the guys that are 6'5 you know 300 pounds we're going to go out and look at guys that we think can get there and that's sort of like with Tyron Tanani as a guy that they think can get there so that was very interesting listening to him talk about that yeah uh going back to the offense a little bit Dennis Simmons um if you don't block you don't play I thought that was interesting he's the outside wide receivers coach I asked him about the uh the guys in the transfer portal, they bring in over Mario Williams from um, from Oklahoma. He didn't say a lot about him, but Terrell Bynum from Washington and then uh, Brendan Rice from Colorado, a couple of Pac-12 guys. He had a lot of good things to say about those guys. Yeah, I talked about Brendan Rice being a spectacular practice player, a guy that works and outworks everybody on the football team, which is new uh, music to his ears. Um, talked a lot about you know Ty Terrell Bynum and just... One of the first things he got when Tyrell Bynum announced that he was committing to USC was, you know, his coach up in Washington said, hey, he's a great person, a great, great worker. It's like called him out of the blue. It's like, hey, I want to tell you this guy's amazing. Yeah. yeah, went out of his way to kind of reach out to him about Tyrell Bynum. So, you know, getting some guys in the system. And I asked him a little bit about Raleigh Brown because Raleigh Brown is a guy that's going to play uh, running back and he's going to play slot receiver. And I said, coach. How do you steal him away from Kyle McDonald? How do you get him away from the running back room? And he said, you know what? We don't really have to do that. Uh, it's going to be one of those things where we're going to use him in spots. And, and they were confident that they were going to be able to find a place for him. And talking to Raleigh, he says he's going to start out probably a little more with the receivers because that's the harder position to learn. Yeah. And so we may see him a little more in the slot, but we may see him running the ball out of the slot. I mean, you never know with Oklahoma's offense and Lincoln Riley, they really want to get the ball into the playmaker's hands, but it doesn't necessarily have to be throwing the ball, you know, 15 yards downfield. They could just hand it off to him. He could be part of the option game we're going to see. Yeah, speaking of Kyle McDonald coming over from Utah, uh, he was a really interesting guy, too. You tried, Gerard tried to get both those guys to talk about fighting over Lake yes. Brown. They would not, they were not biting. They were not biting. Um, asked him about, you know, the, some of the transfer portal guys that, were, that are coming in, like Travis Dye and Austin uh, Jones from... Uh, Stanford, and I also asked him about a guy that came in last year, uh, Darren Barlow. He had some really good things to say about him, but I mean, overall, he just wants the guys to compete in that running back room. What, did, what kind of stood out from what he said to you? 
Yeah, he answered your question about Darren Barlow sort of like I would. I mean, you can tell he likes him a lot. Yeah. And I think Darren Barlow is a player for USC. I think he's a guy that could end up being very, very good and very similar to some of the running backs that Kyle McDonald has had at Utah. So I could see why he likes him. He's a little bigger body than a couple of the guys that get through the portal, Austin Jones and Travis Dye. You know, when I threw the Raleigh Brown question at him, he said something that was I thought was kind of funny. He kind of opened his eyes and looked around and said, my vision is Lincoln Riley's vision. <laughs> That's where he plays is where Lincoln wants him to play. So again, deferring to Lincoln Riley in terms of the offensive scheme and what they want to do with play calling, but a lot of energy from Kyle McDonald. Like a really, you could see an energy guy, a, a younger guy, and you can see how that would work on the recruiting trail. He talked a little bit about recruiting top dogs, but he also talked about developing guys, and he talked about his rotation. Uh, he, he really, He's open, you know, whatever works. You know, if it's Zach Moss and he gets the ball 35 times a game, then so be it. If it's a guy that they've got to rotate and that kind of looks more like what USC has right now in the stable is a bunch of rotation guys, he's going to do that too. He's had a 1,000-yard rusher uh, multiple times at Utah, and he talked about Oklahoma having a 1,000-yard rusher every year with Lincoln Riley. Despite all the talk of quarterbacks and the air raid offense, they have a 1,000-yard rusher. So the rushing game, and again, when you've got multiple offensive line coaches, uh, and I think that's where Zach Hansen comes in. I think it's very interesting him having that experience at Tulsa's off to line coach and being able to teach good technique to the tight ends. So the tight ends are not just out there, you know, as, as big receivers. They're out there actually doing something in the run game, which I think is a kind of a low key, been a big, big thing USC has been lacking over the years. Yeah. Speaking of Zach Hansen, the last one we'll probably talk about. I know there's a lot of stuff to get to, but there's a whole lot. We just we just were sat in that room for like three hours. We're trying to like everything that's at the top of our head. But he's big. He's six eight. I said his brother's the same size. They kind of made a deal when they were younger. Let's not fight. We're going to, like, break stuff if we fight. So he's not a fighter, even though Sean Cody tried to get him. Yeah, Sean Cody causing, tr causing trouble today. What's going on? He he mentioned to everybody, he said, hey, I just want to know if there's any tension between Keeley and USCFootball.com and Ryan Abraham. And So that was the first that was the first shot he made. And then he came back and he tried to get a wrestling match going between Sean Nua and Zach Hansen. Right. Which would be a good match, but they, you know, the, Zach's more of a uh, lover than a fighter. He was saying, but uh, you asked about the recruiting aspect because his wife comes over and they're, they're going to be working in the same place, and she's on the recruiting side of things. Yeah, it's most coaches get to come home and decompress, and they don't really talk too much about football, let alone recruiting. But his his wife, Annie Hansen, is the director of football recruiting, so you know it actually works a lot because. He's certainly going to be able to talk and reference about recruits, and she's going to have a different perspective uh, about the recruiting process and how she's interacting with these recruits. So I think it's really great. I mean, you're, you're getting kind of, uh, you know, synergy there with recruiting. Um, but, yeah, big guy uh, comes into the room and uh, really, you know, kind of just easygoing. You can see where he's actually originally from California, which we yeah. didn't know, Northern California. So he's been up there on the road recruiting in Northern California. And that's sort of why I kind of wonder, okay, why is he up there at Folsom and these different schools? Well, he's originally a Northern California guy. So yeah, uh, yeah he brings a lot to the table, I think in terms of the technique and the hands-on with uh, the, the tight end position, but you're also getting a little bit of talk there. And I don't want to go and put words into his mouth, but I think you're going to see a little more of an H back fullback position where he talked about not recruiting just a bunch of guys that are 6'5", 260 pounds, but also finding those guys that can get through the gaps that are a little smaller. And that would kind of hit, they want to get some guys that are lead blockers that are fullbacks. And they had that at Oklahoma. So uh, they've been successful with that. You don't see that a lot in college football anymore, but that's how you get thousand yard rushers. You got to get some guys going north and south that will block somebody in a gap. Yeah, and I asked him about the kind of overlap because we haven't seen an inside wide receivers coach at USC. So you have an outside receivers coach inside and tight ends, and he said there's some overlap, and it wasn't going to be we're just recruiting this type of body. He wants a, a variety of guys. I think USC's done a pretty good job of that. I don't know how they've utilized them, but they have a variety of bodies there. Yeah, he he sounded very optimistic about the talent at, at tight end. And, and I also going back to Josh Henson, not to get confused, Zach and Josh, Josh the OC, asked him a little bit about the offensive linemen, and, and everybody wanted to know, you know, what's the current evaluation of the roster? And, you know, he, he sounded optimistic as well. Yeah. He liked some of the guys that he saw, and he hasn't seen a lot of them. And all the coaches basically said, listen, we ha we don't get a lot of time with the players on the field, so we don't want to make too many uh, big, uh, uh, you know, grand uh, evaluations. But he definitely sounded optimistic, said that, you know, we got some big guys. They look the way they should look. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up here from the USC campus. Our first instant analysis in a while, Joe. We used yeah. to do this a long time ago. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, nice. Well, we're going to wrap things up. Make sure you check out uscfootball.com for tons more. We have a lot of video stuff going up on every single one of the coaches we got to talk to today. For Gerard Martinez, I'm Ryan Abraham. Check out uscfootball.com for more.